iOS 16 is here and it brings some exciting new features. I'm sure you've heard the hype around those pretty new lock screens, editing and unsending text messages, and that fancy photo cutout tool. But that only scratches the surface of what iOS 16 can do. We got lots of lesser known gems with this update that could be game changers for how you use your iPhone. I'll be sharing my personal favorites with you today. And these features are available for any iPhone that runs iOS 16, not just the new iPhone 14 series. iOS 16 works with all phones from the iPhone 8 onwards, and I'll be using an iPhone 11 today. I'll be going through the features by categories like camera and mail, and we'll have chapters enabled, so feel free to skip around. If your iPhone is compatible with iOS 16 but you haven't downloaded it yet, I'll also link one of our articles with a step-by-step -step guide for that process in the description. And before you install it, don't forget to back up your iPhone. My colleague Patrick Holland made a video on how to do that. And thank you so much for watching. All right, now that we've gone over all of those logistics, let's dive into these new features. The camera app got lots of neat updates with iOS 16. The first being that your hidden and recently deleted albums are now locked. If I go into my hidden album, I have to use Face ID to open it. And if I go to my recently deleted album, it's the same. So you can move any photos you wanna keep private into your hidden album, and you can rest assured knowing that whatever embarrassing photos you've recently deleted will also stay private. But if you wanna disable this lock feature, all you have to do is open your settings app, scroll down to photos, and turn off having Face ID as a requirement to view those albums. I don't know about you, but I find myself with a lot of duplicate photos and videos, and iOS 16 makes it easy to identify and delete those dupes to free up space. Just go into Photos, and then Albums, and you'll see a new duplicates album where Apple compiles photos and videos you've saved more than once. You can either delete the duplicates or merge them, which saves the highest quality duplicate and trashes the rest. This next feature is for all you photographers out there. If you like touching up your pictures, iOS 16 makes it easy by allowing you to copy and paste photo edits. Start by editing a photo however you want. Next, tap the three dots in the upper right hand corner of the screen and select copy edits. Then go to another photo, tap the three dots again and select paste edits. And voila, all your color adjustments and filters will transfer over. You can even apply your edits to multiple photos at once by selecting them, pressing the three dots again and tapping paste edits. If you find yourself accumulating lots of screenshots by sending memes that you probably only look at once, this next feature is for you. With iOS 16, you can copy screenshots to your clipboard to send to friends while simultaneously deleting them so they don't stay saved in your camera roll. Simply take a screenshot like normal, click on it, tap done, and then select copy and delete. Now you can paste the screenshot into a conversation to share with a friend without it taking up space in your photos. I know you've heard about unsending texts on iOS 16, but have you heard about unsending emails? Lucky for us, that's something you can do as well. After you send an email, an undo send option will appear in blue letters at the bottom of the screen for 10 seconds. Click it within that 10 second window and you can edit your email draft and send it again whenever you're ready. You can make this window longer by opening settings, scrolling down to mail, and tapping undo send delay. The window can be up to 30 seconds long. You can also schedule your emails to be sent with the Mail app. Once you've written your email, long press the Send button. You'll see two preset times to send the email, or you can tap Send Later to set a custom time. You can view all of your scheduled emails in the Send Later section of your Mailboxes page. And if you know you need to reply to an email but don't have time to do it right when you get it, you can tell the Mail app to remind you later. Just swipe left on an email, tap Remind Me, and either pick a preset time or select Remind Me Later to choose a custom time. <music> iOS 16 also brings us some useful translation and conversion tools. For example, you can use your camera to translate text. Position the camera towards the text you'd like to translate until a yellow outline appears around it. Then tap the text selection button and the translate button and you'll get your translation. From what I can tell so far, you sort of need to treat these translations like the ones from Google Translate and take them with a grain of salt. They're not always perfect, but definitely helpful. You can also use the camera to convert currency. Just position it towards a price tag until a yellow bar appears around it. Next, tap the text selection button and then the conversion button in the lower left-hand side of the screen. And there's our converted price. 
And you can do unit conversions in the Notes app. Simply type out a number with a corresponding unit, tap Done, and then tap the unit to see various conversions. have just a few more miscellaneous features for you that are just too cool not to share. You may be familiar with the ability to share a saved Wi-Fi password with another iOS user when two Apple devices are near each other. But this doesn't always work perfectly and doesn't help if you're trying to share a Wi-Fi password with someone using an Android or a computer. Apple's addressed this gap by allowing us to view and share our saved Wi-Fi passwords. Open Settings, then Wi-Fi, and tap the information icon next to the network you want the password for. Then tap Password and use Face ID to view it. You can then copy the password into your clipboard and share it. If you're a fan of haptic keyboards that offer a physical response as you type, you're in luck. With iOS 16, just open Settings, then go to Sounds and Haptics, Keyboard Feedback, and turn on Haptic to enable a haptic keyboard on your iPhone. Those are my favorite lesser known iOS 16 features. What are your favorite iOS 16 features? Let us know in the comments below. Also, we do these videos on Apple stuff every week, so if there's anything Apple related you wanna hear about, be sure to let us know in the comments below and subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. Thank you so much for watching.